Thank you very much. Fellow students, family, friends, academics, it is an honour to welcome you to St George's University of London Graduation Day 2017. The University have entrusted me to give the opening speech at this year's graduation ceremony. I know right, what were they thinking? I'll keep it brief as there's much less chance of mistakes and they say it's best to leave your audience before your audience leaves you. It's been an absolute honour serving as a student president this year and it's a privilege to have the opportunity to congratulate you all on your wonderful achievements. In my time as president, I've had the great opportunity to see you do and representing such a diverse and talented group of students. This makes me very proud. What I think makes St George such a special, special place is how all these different people come together as a tight-knit community and a family creating the ever mysterious George's spirit, something that can't easily be explained, but is never forgotten. As always in life, there comes a time when we must all fly the nest and move on. And I hope that you take the values and ethos that sums up St George's and its community and go on to use that positive attitude to help society throughout your life and careers. But ultimately, I hope however you choose to spend your life, you are happy and fulfilled. We are in a period where the background noise is the rhetoric of building walls or dividing relationships. However, it takes great individuals like you and great places like St George's to show just how much can be achieved when we are surrounded by a rich and diverse society, when we build bridges and tear down the walls that divide us. I ask that you shoulder the burden of being a St George's alumni as those are long 250 years before you have done. Make your individual mark on society. Don't just simply stand by and watch the world pass. Push forward, fight for your patients, fight for yourself, and fight for your colleagues, because together we can make a collective difference. Be proud, talk truth to power, and make a difference. Graduation is a time to celebrate the fantastic memories and achievements you have made during your time here, and to appreciate a new journey you're about to embark on. Life will continue to throw you on top curveball, but be brave, be ambitious, and don't be afraid to dream. And while you move on throughout the world, achieving great things, you take a piece of St. George's with you. Please don't become strangers. You are all lifelong members of St. George's Student Union, and we'll always be waiting to hear about the fantastic things you achieve in, in the future. And as the American poet Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And already, by being here today, you have made a number of people tremendously proud. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. London has to offer. London has 
and education value culturally and socially way beyond academic learning. We are happy with this, and in many ways would like to repay the favours that have been given. I'd like to go on to describe a few of these. Sadly, London has featured in a number of terrorist attacks in recent months. You will have read and seen pictures of these terrible events. But you may not know that St George's paramedic students were present in the emergency response to both the Westminster and London Bridge incidents. They are on attachment with London Ambulance Service. Their brave actions directly save lives in terrifying situations. Their great resilience matches that of London. Our scientific discoveries frequently have profound impact. Prevention, greater understanding, better diagnosis, or creating more successful treatment can all help relieve human suffering. We are beginning to wake up to the prospect of being unable to treat bacterial infections because of antibiotic resistance. And our innovative research has led directly into a new degree program. Our science may be created locally in shooting, but has local benefits. In public health, we play a major role. We are conducting a landmark public health study as to the long-term effects of e-cigarettes, monitoring local volunteers who are switching from tobacco to vaping to help determine whether we should be offering e-cigarettes on the NHS. People have a choice about smoking, but not the other air they breathe. Polluted air is estimated to kill 9,000 Londoners prematurely every year, and hence the importance of our research looking at the health effects of pollution as part of a large and multi cross institutional project. Our enabled study is examining the legacy of London's Olympic Village. Will we reap health benefits from specially designed housing complex? the ability to walk, cycle, and access parkland. Our direct links with the community of Tooting make us proud and extend beyond employment opportunities and a supportive place to study. Our activities include local schools, ones with prison, food banks, and many other charitable activities. We have opened our doors to public engagement events which are extremely popular. They present our latest research or the stories behind headlines in accessible ways. Topics such as our genetic makeup or how to manage chronic pain have recently featured. I now turn to the people who deserve our utmost praise, our graduates who have studied hard and are rightly the focus of celebration today. Your accomplishments are great as individuals, and some have overcome extraordinary obstacles, such as the Syrian refugee who thought all was lost in the atrocities, but is graduating today. You each have rich and diverse futures ahead of you. We're delighted that you have chosen George's for your studies. You're going to go forth in the world and share your knowledge and expertise. But before doing so, I'd like to thank you for all you've contributed whilst with us, both to your studies and more broadly. Whichever course you're graduating from, it is the beginning of your new lives. You'll have mixed emotions, undoubtedly relief, hopefully a lot of excitement. But I wouldn't be surprised a little bit of uncertainty or fear, which is only natural. But be reassured you have been well prepared for what is ahead. And it's not just me saying that. Surveys are conducted regularly to find out how well prepared foundation doctors feel for the tasks 
that they could undertake. And St George's students feature to the top of that league table virtually every time. So, one league table I'm delighted to quote. <laughs> I still practice Olympic myself, and therefore I'm completely aware of the rising demands and challenging times of the health service. Anecdotes about St George's quality have already filtered to me through these means. And I also would like to say how much pride we take in the fact that our physician associate programme enjoys a 100% success rate in the national examination. This success is not shared by others. Your degree takes you in a flexible way to a wide variety of opportunities, both here and worldwide. Things undoubtedly will and have to change in the future, and we need you as young and key influencers within an evolving health and social care system. Don't forget, the magnificent thing that awaits you is, as opposed to appearing and being apologetic, I'm just a student, how that will change. You'll enter an environment, and I can assure you, people can't wait to see you. It is a positive thing, the democratised access to medical information on the internet but you still have an important role to help patients navigate this tsunami of opinion and information and guide them through their toughest times with your care, expertise and kindness. I don't know what you're all planning to do in the future and indeed many of you may not know, but I'm just going to describe two or three characters from St George's by means of inspiration. Claire Nightingale, working in our population health division, in 10 years has created no less than 30 papers and is a world expert on looking at body mass index and variations with ethnic differences. That's really important because we need to know what is appropriate, judged as underweight and overweight. Professor Helen Stokes Lampard, graduated in medicine 10 years ago, was very attracted to the specialty and is now currently the youthful and contemporary chair and lead of general practitioners for the country. She still took the time to come to St George's to talk to our students and encourage them into a similar career. And finally, Alistair Mackenzie Ross, Research into the genetics of melanoma are combined with the practice of plastic surgery, the two sadly so often needing to go together. We are proud of you as our alumni. Your adventures are beginning. Like me and everybody else in this uh, audience, of course it won't be utterly plain sailing. To echo Corey's sentiments, there will be embarrassments, disappointments, and perhaps the odd failure on the way. But these are very important too. We all learn from our experiences, not just the successful ones. I would like to thank all your friends, family, and supporters here today for loaning you to us. We valued you these years and you will always remain part of our university family. As you may have heard, if you've heard the deafening din within the university, our physical environment is rapidly changing. We do have a wonderful heritage, but it weaves directly into our ambitious future. Please keep in touch and come back to see us, if only for a coffee or other drink and the bar that's currently, as I speak, undergoing radical transformation. So, it is an extremely proud moment, graduation. The audience is with you, the staff, your family, 
and your peers are here to witness it. Walk tall, be proud. Today is your day. Thank you. We will now begin presenting today's graduates, and I call upon Dr. Penny Murphy to commence the presentation of the undergraduate awards. Principal, on behalf of St. George's, may I present the candidates for the following degrees of St. George's Hospital Medical School. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Healthcare Science, Cardiac Physiology, the winner of the St. George's Gold Award, Laura Jurea Amarin. Joel Babu. Grace Balaji. Simran Khwaja. Alexander Tony Masters. Sharon Sarah Matthew. Sophie Roseanne Nichols. Ruth Andrea Outshaw. Precious Julanica Santos. Sharmini Selvaraja. Natalie Wirasinga. Emma Wright. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Healthcare Science, Respiratory and Sleep Physiology, the winner of the St. George's Silver Award, Charlie Elizabeth Caulfield. Indusha Mayuri Coogan. <laughs> Winner of the Respiratory and Sleep Physiology Achievement Prize, Molly Elizabeth Riley. <laughs> Dominic Lucas Bodan Roman Turek. For the undergraduate diploma in healthcare science, Francesca Brooke Graham. That concludes the presentation of the graduands in healthcare science. We have now reached the part of the ceremony where we will award the first of our honorary fellowships. Dr. Paris Ataliotis will say a few words and then present Professor Nigel Brown with his honorary fellowship. Professor Nigel Brown is well known to many of us here as former head of the Institute of Medical and Biomedical Education at St. George's, which is the hub of our undergraduate and graduate programs and courses. Nigel joined St. George's in 1989 and progressed from head of unit through to deputy principal. During the following 27 years, Nigel oversaw at least three major reorganizations of the educational side of the university as departments were merged and new courses were formed. 
when, while Nigel was best known here as a member of the teaching faculty, his research expertise was perhaps somewhat under the radar, at least at St. George's. But Nigel was an exceptionally distinguished researcher in embryonic development, with a particular expertise in teratology, the study of abnormal development. Nigel's BSc was from the University of Leeds, followed by a PhD at the University of Surrey, which included a period of work in Germany. Nigel then moved to the USA at uh, the National Institutes of Health for his postdoctoral work. At the tender age of 25, Nigel was appointed as an assistant professor at, uh, in the medical school at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. In fact, he was teaching there in 1981 when President Reagan was brought to George Washington University Hospital for emergency treatment following the attempt on his life. Nigel returned to the UK and the Medical Research Council's Experimental Embryology and Teratology Unit in Surrey, then relocated with the unit to St. George's in 1989. Highlights of Nigel's earlier research are his work on the effects of alcohol on the developing embryo, as well as his involvement in identifying the risk of spina bifida following exposure of the embryo to the anti-epileptic drug valproate. Nigel's later research was focused mainly on heart development, and in 1990, he and Lewis Wolpert published a hugely influential paper that proposed a theory for how the embryo tells its left side from its right side. This paper has continued to influence the field of left-right asymmetry and has had a major impact in our subsequent understanding of how several congenital heart defects are caused. Nigel and his colleagues in London, France, the Netherlands, the USA and Japan went on to identify some of the genes involved in determining the normal left-sided development of the heart and to figure out how those genes contributed to normal heart development. More recently, they've also demonstrated that variation in some of those genes can also lead to heart disease in the adult, specifically to atrial fibrillation. Nigel was president of the European Society of Teratology and then chairman of the International Federation of Teratology Societies and has served on many advisory committees on drug and chemical effects during pregnancy in the UK, the US, and for the World Health Organization. In the area of education, Nigel has been an active teacher in anatomy and embryology throughout his career. At St. George's, he was preclinical sub-dean for the medicine program and one of the small team that merged the undergraduate and postgraduate medical courses. He was responsible for starting the BSc in Healthcare Sciences degree at St. George's and oversaw the expansion of the BSc in Biomedical Sciences from 25 students to over 200. Nigel's, Nigel's leadership roles at St. George's began as the head of the Department of Anatomy, then head of the Division of Biomedical Sciences, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, Director of the Institute of Medical and Biomedical Education, and finally, Deputy Principal. Nigel's commitment to both academic teaching and research is a notable aspect of his career, and he's been a role model for this balanced approach to academia. He's taught throughout his life, particularly enjoying small group tutorials and personal interaction with students, no matter how much management was required in his other roles. Nigel knew St. George's inside and out and provided essential support and information to our principal when she joined St. George's two years ago, as well as to Jane Safel, the current head of IMBI. Over the years, Nigel has always also been a source of support and sage advice to many members of staff, and his door was almost always open, except perhaps on Thursday afternoons when he played in the weekly football games involving staff from all areas of the university and hospital. Nigel was involved in these games since he started at St. George's and continued right up until his retirement, finishing with a mini tournament that featured current staff and those who left St. George's long ago. Nigel retired from St. George's last year, and it's a testament to him that St. George's needed to replace him with at least three separate senior roles. Principal, I request you by the authority of council to admit Nigel Brown as an honorary fellow of St. George's University of London.
Uh, well, thank, thank you, Principal Jenny. Thank you, Paris colleagues. Um, I'm immensely proud of having been part of St. George's for the, the vast majority of my career. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted that the university has recognized my small contributions with this uh, fellowship. Um, now, actually, I'm just the warm-up honorary fellow this morning. Um, my colleague, Professor Hilton, at the other end of the line will be saying a few more words on both of our behalves later on this morning. Um, so uh, that's all from me, except just to repeat, um, thank you for the fellowship in the university. I'm dead chuffed. We will now resume the presentation of graduands, and I call upon Miss Philippa Tostevan to present the MBBS graduands. Principal. On behalf of St George's, may I present the following candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of London and from St George's Hospital Medical School. Iman Yasmin Abdul Khalik. <laughs> Gabrielle Marie Odile Abia Bateo Talon. Olumide Oluwashun Ardebambu. <laughs> Bernadetta Bataria Tiani. <laughs> Priya Agarwal. <laughs> Sunia Susan Ahmed. Elena Ahmed. <laughs> Mariam Fatima Ahmed. <laughs> Mazia Ahmadi. <laughs> Brinda Aya. Saima Alam. <laughs> Zahid Ali. <laughs> and the winner of the St. George's Bronze Award, Siti Maisera Umran. Arta Anana Adusi. <laughs> Holly Louise Angel. <laughs> Abirami and Pasran. <laughs> and the winner of the British Pharmacological Society Prize, Salma Audi. Ishna Kiran Ullak. And the joint winner of the Freeling Prize, Lucy Ostrang. The nominee for the Professor Tim Northfield Medal for Medicine and the joint winner of the Brackenbury Prize in Medicine and Surgery, Alexandra Emily Baker.
Jane Catherine Barnfield. Christopher Francis Barron. Andrew, Thomas Andrew Batten, sorry. Lowell Lucas Sharma Behrman. Charlotte Elizabeth Wendela Beastall. Fahima Begum. Tamana Begum. Darren Stephen Bell. Sunanda Bhatia. Michael Lloyd Billingsley. Saida Sakina Zara Bukhari. Nicholas Copeland Brassington. Tiresh Brimo. Amjad Bassam Adi Bergen. Katy Mira Burke. Flora May Campbell. Melissa Rachel Campbell. Harry Charles Kavanagh. Ushka Chebron. Georgina Sarah Chamberlain. Neil Edward Chaplin. Ruth Ann Child. <laughs> Kui Ming Chu. <laughs> Kim Citron. <laughs> Cheryl Clark. Clairol Cletus. Rebecca Sean Coles. Rosanna Marilyn Dorinda Boswell Connell. Ryan David Cross. Alexandra Alice Crossland. <laughs> Lucia Sarah Curran. <laughs> Stephen Peter Daly. <laughs> Gareth Evan James Davy.
Arthur William Raven Day. Hayo de Murga Iturbi. And the winner of the current prize in psychiatry, Philip Emilio de Souza. Fraser Douglas Deeming. Benjamin Delda. Sarah Duras. Robin Matthew Drew. Elizabeth Jane Dunningham. John Alexander Van Diedem Edwards. Abdel Rahim El Tadir Hamid El Neil. Pamela Joy Aligio. Rahim Karim Ismail. Elizabeth Grace Evans. Justina Farme. Robert, Matthew Robert Farrand. Yeah. Yes, now. Oh, Shara Elias. I'm sorry, Shara Elias. Okay. Shara Elias. Okay. Kira Louise Farrell. Winner of St. George's Gold Award. <laughs> Megan Kirby Josephine Fernandez. Michael John Flatman. Michael John Flatman. Michael John Flatman. Michael John Flatman. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Matthew Robert Farrant. Edward Mean Duong Fong San Pan. <laughs> uh, Mark John Ford. <laughs> Jonathan Mark Frost. <laughs> Giona and Saba Gaitua. And winner of St. George's Gold Award, Michael Patrick Gallagher. <laughs> Eleanor Amanda Gatpan Singh. <laughs> Emily Rochelle Gardner Bogard. Anil Kumar Gratia. <laughs> Serena Saroja Gordon. <laughs> Katrina Sophie Grace. <laughs> Matthew Green.
Sarah Neger Gagathis. <laughs> Mady Gouled. <laughs> Rebecca Catherine Elizabeth Hale. <laughs> Simon Michael Hall. Josefa Amiral Hack, Christopher Francis Harlow, and the winner of the St George's Gold Award, Lee David Hatter. Maria Monica Haydock. Catherine Emily Haynes, <laughs> Tina Edith Sigrid Hedberg, <laughs> Steve Hidgua, <laughs> uh, James Hayward Holland. Jonathan James Holiday, <laughs> Huma Hosamudin, <laughs> Rachel Patricia Hughes, <laughs> Jonathan William Hurst. James Edward Hustleby, <laughs> Anya Margot Natasha Hutchinson, <laughs> Olatosin Olaboden Olosimadile Igbalike. <laughs> Samantha Chioma Auche Ika. <laughs> Tina Anoma Uye Ima Titiqua. <laughs> and the joint winner of the Lee Prize in Family Medicine and the winner of the Crisp Prize in Psychological Medicine, Louise Kathleen Helen Jones. Joint winner of the Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics Prize, Mataza Kardam. <laughs> Marta Katazina Kaboviak. <laughs> Farmin Kalik. Abdullah bin Khalid. <laughs> Rake Ula Khan. <laughs> the joint winner of the Royal College of General Practitioners of South London Faculty Prize, Zarma Ahmed Khan. Kim, <laughs> Harry Edward King, <laughs> Evgenia Kolivaki, <laughs> Catherine Jane Marta Krasinovska. Nora Lagzuli, <laughs> Hugh 
Hugo Tech-Holy. Shivan Sandeep Lakhani. The winner of the St. George's Bronze Award, Angela Kit Ying Lam. Winner of the St. George's Gold Award, Aisha Shamila Latif. Winner of the St. George's Gold Award, Jamie Lucy Leela Leverett. Emily Louise Liebekanz. The joint winner of the Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics Prize, Catherine Ann Lindley. Sebastian Jonathan Parker Locke. Rebecca Louise Lockhart. Katie Ann Lofthouse. William Frederick Long. Alexander Guilori. Stephanie Maparidu. the Kate Charles Prize in Obstetrics and Gynaecology, Alison Claire Marriott. <laughs> Hannah Louise Marriott. Sarah Ann Norm. Kieran Patrick McCauley. Nicola Patricia McCarthy. <laughs> Winner of the St. George's Bronze Award, Cassandra May MacDonald. <laughs> and the joint winner of the Lee Prize in Family Medicine, Katie Ellen McDowell. Shane McIver. Madeline Rose McKean. Charles Ian McLaren. Alistair Robert McManus. Clara Antonia Mead Robson. <laughs> Thomas Robin Dixon Menzies. <laughs> and the winner of St. George's Gold Award, Naeem Ulkari Merchant. Winner of the Hyla Mint Prize in Ophthalmology and winner of St. George's Bronze Award, Ali Akbar Munan. <laughs> Saima Mujib. <laughs> Amy Louise Mully. Anais to Shami Mutrambua. <laughs> Isaac Hader Adam Nahur. <laughs> Zaruf Ahmed Naji. <laughs> 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 
Mahalaxmi Nambiraj. Arkashin Rayron. Ifran Nas. Christiane O'Connor. <laughs> the joint winner of the Brackenby Prize in Medicine and Surgery and the joint winner of the Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics Prize, the joint winner of the Royal College of GPs of South London Faculty Prize, Excellence in Clinical Communication Prize, and the winner of the A.C. Dornhurst <laughs> Annual Prize. Rosalie Sarah May Ockham. <laughs> and Iola Oluwa Fumilola Oladeni. Sarah Felicity O'Neill. Mohammed Obeid Emerji. Edward Ronald Palmer. Trishan Arvind Patel. Nikita Patel. Angelie Pathak. And the nominee for the Professor Tim Northfield Medal for Medicine and nominee for the University of London Gold Medal Viva, Louis Anthony Pico. Christopher Joseph Powell. Yamini Shanti Premakuma. <laughs> Winner of the St. George's Gold Award, Shiram Rabintharan. <laughs> Javeri Raja. Hafiz Rajwani. <laughs> Thomas Richard Rees. <laughs> Carol Reed. <laughs> uh, William Dominic Riley. Darian Sion Charles Richards. <laughs> Julie Ann Richards. <laughs> David James Ritchie. <laughs> James Christopher Roach. And the winner of the Reshmi Varma Prize in Obstetrics and Gynaecology, Catherine Marie Rothon. <laughs> Simajit Kaur Sander. <laughs> Aman Raj Singh Sandhu.
winner of St George's Gold Award, Nicholas Peter Sawyers. <laughs> Nominee for the University of London Gold Medal Viva, joint winner of the Brackenby Prize in Medicine and Surgery, winner of the Betwell Prize and the Dermatology Prize, and the Professor Joe Collier Prize for Excellence in Clinical Pharmacology, and the Professor Tim Northfield Medal for Medicine, Sophie Tisha beresford Scandal. <laughs> Anna Marissa Scott. <laughs> Winner of the St George's Gold Award, Chloe Siobhan Searle. <laughs> Saeed Iturza Ali Shah. <laughs> Shuhab Shahid. Pravthi Padmanabha Shetty. <laughs> Song E. Huan Shin. <laughs> Kirsten Patricia Shoemaker. <laughs> Neha Rajendra Shukla. The winner of the Kathleen Vales Prize Examination in Renal and Transplantation Medicine and the winner of St George's Gold Award, Misha Mukesh Siddhapra. <laughs> Safa Anis Siddiqui. <laughs> Anna Luisa Silva Ferreira. Winner of the Anesthesia and Critical Care Medicine Prize, Henry John Simon. <laughs> Esme Ora Ama Saka Cerebo. <laughs> Shashank Chilapan Sivaji. Jasmine Rose Slinger. <laughs> William Snell. <laughs> Ayoana Stasapulu. <laughs> Sasha Oliver Stout. Jeeva Khan Subramaniam. Sindhu Jash Suresh. Saeed Masood Tabibi. Han Po Hong. <laughs> Victoria Shiori Taylor. <laughs> Rina Thakra. <laughs> the winner of the St George's Gold Award, Kathleen Mary Thompson. and the joint winner of the Freeling Prize, Fraser John Charles Thompson. <laughs> the winner of the Bailey Brodie Clark and Thompson Prize in Pediatrics and the winner of St George's Gold Award, Elizabeth Patricia Constance Thorne. <laughs> a 
Reuben Patrick Thumbadu. <laughs> Alistair James Todd. <laughs> Winner of St George's Gold Award, Ying Ran To. Madurka Kingsley Ume. <laughs> Et Kapasikta. <laughs> Robert Peter Vaughan. <laughs> John Xavier Vela. Susanna Isabel Ventura Forever Vega. Serena, Serena Evelyn Verdi. Mavengi Vivai Kanathan. Natasha Vora. Mahika Waha. <laughs> Sabrina Norshen Wahid. <laughs> Freya Waite Taylor. <laughs> Joshua Matthew Walker. Philippa Claire Wallace. Samuel John Walters. Chi Chun Wan. James Garant Robert Watson. We Kui Wei. <laughs> Nominee for the Professor Tim Northfield Medal for Medicine, Paul Welford. <laughs> Kate Hassan Wesseldine. James Westwick Payne. <laughs> Amy Elizabeth Wildgoose. <laughs> Jessica Francis Gray Wills. <laughs> Grace Pui Young Wong. Sean Christina Wood. <laughs> Lynette Yup Chian Yui. <laughs> Jin Si Yuan. concludes the presentation of the MBBS graduates. A large part of our MBBS teaching is delivered by doctors who work in our partner NHS trusts. Many of these colleagues see it as an important part of their role, educating the next generation of doctors. We want to recognize and applaud all of the teachers who have contributed to our students' success. But a few stand out as especially dedicated and enthusiastic 
having received the most nominations by students when filling in their feedback, as having provided excellent teaching during the previous academic year. We therefore present to you the winners of the MBBS Undergraduate Teaching Awards. The winner from South West London and St George's Mental Health NHS Trust, Merton, Dr Louise Guest. The winner from Ashford and St Peter's Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust, Dr Diab Haddad. <laughs> winner from Epsom and St Helier University Hospitals NHS Trust, Dr Sarosh Khan. Winner from Croydon Health Services NHS Trust, Dr. Paul Mullane. <laughs> Winner from Surrey and Sussex Healthcare NHS Trust, Dr. Sharmila Shivarajan. Winner from St. South West London and St George's Mental Health NHS Trust Merton, Dr Thomas Vergesi. <laughs> Unfortunately, three doctors could not be present today to collect their award from St George's Hospital NHS Foundation Trust, Dr Moshin Hussain. From <laughs> From Frimley Health NHS Foundation Trust, Dr. Oliver, Oliver Jefferson. <laughs> and from Kingston Hospital NHS Foundation Trust, Dr. Tapesh Takrashi. <laughs> that concludes the presentation of the MBBS Teaching Awards. We will now award the second of today's honorary fellowships. Dr. Judith Ibbison will say a few words and pre present Professor Sean Hilton with his honorary fellowship. Thank you. to give a citation for Professor Sean Hilton, who's well known internationally as one of this country's leading medical educators. He can be accurately described as a George's lifer, his connection with the university going all the way from studenthood to retirement and beyond. He began his career here at St George's at the old Hyde Park site, qualifying in medicine in 1974 Specialising in primary care, he became a GP in Kingston at the Cambry Medical Centre. He joined St George's academic staff in 1987 as a senior lecturer, the start of a distinguished 25-year career here in both research and education. He's published extensively with his research interests encompassing a variety of subjects. Initially, he was involved in respiratory research looking at how to improve the care of asthmatic patients, including children, in primary care. Subsequent research papers encompass cardiovascular and behavioural research, as well as clinical quality improvement papers, and latterly, medical education. However, it's his research on the professional behaviour of doctors that was to be most influential. After a sabbatical in the United States, and a fruitful academic collaboration there, his 2005 paper with Henry Slotnick, Proto-Professionalism, How Professionalization Occurs Across the Continuum in Medical Education, became widely discussed and widely cited. Proto-Professionalism 
refers to a developmental stage during undergraduate and postgraduate medical education when essential knowledge and experiences are gained. Hilton and Slotnick's ideal model was of a self-reflective practitioner who acts ethically throughout life, achieving phrenesis, which means professional wisdom. Sean also played a major role among the academic staff at St. George's. He was instrumental in actively mentoring the careers of many junior academics and developing the general practice and primary care department, being appointed professor in 1993 and went on to several other roles, including Dean of Undergraduate Medicine and Deputy Principal. However, it was head of the educational team here that he contributed most to the changing shape of St. George's. Sean worked to keep our institution at the forefront of medical education with a series of innovations. He was instrumental in introducing the uh, country's first medicine degree for graduates here in the year 2000, which innovatively admitted humanities students as well as science students, a model that's enriched the medical community and is now used by many other medical schools. He also took on and led the accreditation process for St. George's toward its own degrees rather than those of the University of London over the two years from 2006 to 2008. Most recently, Sean was involved in setting up the very successful Physician Associate postgraduate course, which was the first of its kind in the UK. Despite retiring in July 2012, Sean has continued to work with St. George's via the University of Nicosia Medical School in Cyprus, where as Professor of Medical Education and Dean for Clinical Studies, he's helped to develop the joint medical programme and supported the development of an MSc in Family Medicine. Outside St. George's, he's also been the President of the Acad 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 Academy of Medical Educators from 2011 to 14, setting professional standards for the clinical teaching in the UK, and he said led quality assurance work for the General Medical Council and the Higher Education Quality Assurance Agency. Throughout his clinical and academic career, he's been involved with patient participation and palliative care, and continues his interests as chairman of the charity healthtalk.org and as a trustee of Prince Alice Hospice, Isha. And let us not forget, on top of all that, 40 years of working for the NHS, including eight as a board member of the um, St. George's NHS Foundation Trust, and 30 years as a GP. Sean's vision, his leadership, and collaborative skills have contributed greatly to St. George's reinvention from an independent medical school to a multi-faculty health sciences university. However, his influence extends beyond St. George's, to patients through his academic research, to students through his development of medical education and his specific promotion of professionalism, and his mentoring of a new generation of academic practitioners in research and educational leadership roles across the United Kingdom. Principal, I request you by the authority of council to admit Professor Sean Hilton as an honorary fellow at St. George's University of London. of that. Uh, Chair of Council, Principal, Honoured Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen and Graduands. Uh, thank you, Principal, for bestowing uh, this distinction of honorary fellowship on me today. And again, on behalf of Nigel and my, myself, this is a heartfelt thanks from both of us. Uh, it's a great honour and I feel proud to be associated with previous recipients many of whom gave me great guidance and support during my earlier years at St. George's. Uh, it's such an honor that I was slightly disappointed to 
learned that it does not automatically entitle me to drive a flock of sheep unhindered along Tooting Broadway. Uh, but there may be somebody this afternoon who can fix that, I don't know. And I must say, uh, a free car parking slot for life is a, is a very practical compensation, thank you. <laughs> so could I add my congratulations and Nigel's to today's graduands? Uh, this is a pivotal day in your lives and marks your entry into a professional career in science and healthcare. To the BSc in healthcare science, uh, those of you who have graduated, you completed a distinctive degree that will enable you to make significant contributions to the essential teamwork of uh, high technology clinical care uh, in the modern NHS. To the medical graduates, well, St. George's integrated curricula have prepared you for the challenges and the opportunities of the multiple career, way, career pathways that are open to you in medicine. And for the physician associates uh, still to come, I'm particularly proud to see you here today, having been instrumental in starting the PA course with my colleague, Dr. Nav Chana, in 2008. Your role in our health service is being developed all the time for the benefit of patients and for the better functioning of clinical teams. I wish all of you every success with the next steps in your careers. I hope you'll always reflect on your time at St. George's with satisfaction and also on the values that we have tried to instill. Always take pride in your achievements, but temper that pride with the humility to work and learn further for the benefit of patients. Now, I don't want to spoil your day in any way, but just be reminded that is, this is only the beginning of the end of studying and learning for your career, and definitely not the end. That you have at least another 30, 30 or 40 years of learning ahead is a real cause for celebration. <laughs> Honestly. And according to today's, today's news, we'll certainly help you stave off dementia. It has prompted me to reflect on my own long-standing association with and commitment to St. George's, which started early in 1969 when the Dean, Dr. Alistair Hunter, offered me the chance to study medicine. Since that time, only my family has held a more important place in my life. I should add that there are probably many years during which my family might dispute that primacy. St. George's the Hospital and St. George's the University are, are indivisible. In the hospital, I've held many roles from lowly surgical dresser to junior doctor to eight years as a director on the board. I've been a thankful patient, a carer. My youngest child was born there. My wife's life was saved there. In the university, I've held roles at every level, I think, from medical student to honorary research assistant to acting principal. So St. George's is, for me and I hope all of us, a very special place. It has a proud history and an exciting future. And I wish the principal and senior team and all the staff and students the very best in the next stage of its life. And thank you once again for the honor you've given us today. Thank you very much, Sean. We will now resume the presentation of graduands, and I call upon Mrs. Karen Roberts to present the postgraduate graduands. Principal, on behalf of St. George's, may I present the candidates for the following postgraduate diploma in physician associate studies at St. George's Hospital Medical School and postgraduate certificate in healthcare studies, St. George's Hospital Medical School. For the postgraduate diploma in physician associate studies, Louise Angwa.
Chen Chief Chandra Kanthan. Luke Jonathan Dennis. Shamira Ghani. Kerry Anita Gopanathan. Winner of the University of London Prize for Best Performance in Postgraduate Diploma, Physician Associate Studies, Samantha Brooke Hunger. <laughs> Mehek Hussein. <laughs> Selena Hussein. Stephanie Sinead Kerr. <laughs> Kikilomo Olale. <laughs> Gazala Pardakji. <laughs> Catherine Jane Price. Hira Rana. Christina Jeanette Reed. Allison Jane Ring. Diva Safi. Nishma Sujathan. Alexander Francis Plummer Thompson. Sharman Jana Ula. Pauline Weir. concludes the presentation of the Physician Associate Studies graduates. I call upon Professor Jane Saffel to deliver the St. George's Pledge. We've reached the point at which uh, all our graduates from all awards are going to stand and say the pledge together. It can be found on page 38 of your programs. So if our graduates of all awards would please stand. We'll say together, I pledge myself and promise I will respect the learning and achievements of those professionals in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply to the benefit to benefit humanity, sorry, all measures which are required. I will remember that there is an art to all professional endeavours and that warmth, compassion and understanding may equal any other intervention. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call on my colleagues when the knowledge or skills of another are needed. I will respect the privacy 
of my fellow human beings, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, I must tread with care where others place their trust in me. I will relate my work to the human state, which may affect a person's family and economic stability. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, including the most vulnerable and marginalized. I make this declaration solemnly, freely, and in humility. If you please all sit now, I will hand over to the Chair of Council, Mr. Michael Draper, for the closing remarks. Well, if mass synchronized applause were an Olympic sport, I think you are all sitting in a medal position. Such has been the warmth, the generosity, the enthusiasm of your response to all today's graduates. But I'm now going to give you a chance to push on and to go for the gold, um, because there are a few thank yous which need to be said at this point on this occasion. First of all, I hope that you would agree that the inherent enjoyability of this event is significantly enhanced by the musical contribution of the gentleman to my right, the Onyx Band. Can you please show your appreciation? Organising an event like this is no trivial matter. Getting everybody in exactly the right place, the right seat, at the right time, in the right order, wearing the right colours is no mean achievement. So can I please ask you to thank everybody who has been involved in organising this wonderful ceremony this morning. I now want to thank, on behalf of you all, all of the staff of St George's that you have encountered through your career at this university. <laughs> Such is your enthusiasm. I was about to list them all, but uh, you got in there ahead of me. But absolutely everybody, the teachers, the professors, the lecturers, the tutors, the counsellors, the librarians, the administrators, everybody, the people on the reception desk, I think they should all be included in those thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next group I want to thank are all your personal supporters. The parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, every other shape of type of relative, your friends, your neighbours, everybody who has helped you at some point during your career up to this point, through the good times and maybe the times when the going got tough, with material support, with moral support. You know who they are, they know who they are, whoever they are. Will you please stand 
and give them a standing ovation, please, all your supporters. But most of all, the thanks are due to you. You, the students, are what makes St George's what it is. You are its raison d'etre, its lifeblood. You give it its dynamism. You create what Corey called the spirit of St George's. But your achievement today does not mark the end of your membership of the St George's community. Once a member, always a member. So can I please ask you finally to thank yourselves and all your fellow graduates this morning for your achievement. And now, can I please ask you all to stand for the National Anthem?